Hey guys, this is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we shall be talking about how to deploy a Flask application in Heroku. Hey guys, welcome back and uh, today we shall be discussing about how to deploy a Flask application in Heroku. Before that, we'll have to understand what is Flask and how do we convert a machine learning application or a machine learning POC to a Flask application. To, in order to learn that, you can go back to one of my videos which has been already uploaded. The link will already be in the description below. Go and try to check that video in order to have a basic understanding on how to create a Flask application. This video is all about how to uh, how to take the flask application to the next level how to deploy the flask application in heroku okay before that let's try to understand what exactly is heroku heroku is one of the first cloud platform as a service and it supports several languages such as ruby java node.js scala uh, python php go and and so on okay the first thing we need to do is define which libraries our application uses that way Heroku knows which ones to provide for us. Similar to how we install them locally when developing the app. Let's say you are uh, in your particular app, you are using PyTorch or you are using TensorFlow. So you'll have to install TensorFlow, right? Similarly in Heroku, you'll have to you will have to provide the list of the uh, like list of the libraries which is used in your application so that these uh, applications these libraries can also be installed in heroku so that heroku understands okay similarly we provide those list of the libraries in requirements.txt okay this is how heroku has been built so requirements.txt is going to be one of the uh, uh, basic requirement for heroku okay there are two techniques to fill your requirements requirements.txt for example in your application you are using three libraries like pandas uh, numpy and tensorflow for example so you can define it here in your requirements.txt as it is like pandas is equals to this uh, 1.0 dot something uh, tensorflow equals to this and uh, numpy equals to this that also you can mention or you can also mention pandas greater than this that means at least 1.0.1 .1 version is required at least okay if you are using a lot of libraries then what you can do is you can go for the pip freeze option now you can go to command prompt go to cmd or go to anaconda prompt and then you can run pip freeze and greater than requirements.txt that means the output of pip freeze will be noted down in your requirements.txt okay this is how you can create your requirements.txt after the requirements of txt is done uh, one of the common mistakes which we you know uh, face while the manual process is the spelling mistakes okay so try to get rid of that apart from that for heroku to be able to run our application like it should we need to define a set of processes or commands that it should run beforehand these commands are located in the proc file so the second important file is going to be the proc file it should be the name should be exactly like what is mentioned here in yellow okay. it should be proc file with p capitals your content should be web g unicorn app app that means what does that mean the web command tells heroku to start a web server for the application using g unicorn since our application is called app.py that is the reason we have set app name to the app okay now let's try to go to the location and see I have already uploaded uh, the uh, already uploaded the code to one of my repositories. So this is my Flask uh, API code. Okay, the only two new additions is going to be the proc file and requirements.txt. I'm I'm telling you again and again if you are not familiar with Flask APIs, how to create Flask APIs, what is Flask APIs, uh, you can go back to one of my videos and uh, you know you can follow that video for a better understanding. Okay, on top of that. Uh, let's say I have already, you know, uploaded my Flask APIs or uploaded the entire code to one of my repositories. On top of that, I have only added two different files. One is your proc dot proc file, and one is your requirements.txt. Proc file contains web unicorn app app, as my app's name is app.py. 
okay and this is how my requirements.txt looks like now when you do pip freeze you might have a lot of uh, libraries let's let's see we we run uh, pip freeze and let's see how the output looks like so that you you can have an understanding uh, my initial step was also that but on top of that what i have done is i knew that these are the set of libraries which are being used so i uh, just selected those set of libraries so what you can do is let's say i want to go to the desktop and pip freeze uh, rec rec.txt okay i'm not typing it requirements.txt let's say okay requirements txt okay so it will take some one or two minutes to run okay it has been successful let's try to go to the desktop and check so this is how your requirements.txt looks like whatever libraries i am using all the libraries versions are mentioned okay you can mention the versions like this equals to this or you can also mention as greater than equals to this. that means this is the lowest version which is accepted okay beyond that anything is fine so i don't want all these libraries to be installed when i deploy it on heroku that's the reason i have limited uh, libraries mentioned here okay so let's say i have already created my github account our next task is to going to be create a heroku account again you in order to create your first heroku account you go to heroku.com and then create your account okay I have already created so let's move on to the application uh, creation go to this particular uh, uh, slash apps create a new app let's try to create a new app let's say I give breast cancer breast cancer API breast cancer prediction right okay let it be so this is available choose a region there are two different locations for heroku so uh, the i mean maybe the master server we don't care about that so you can choose any one of them and create an application once you create your application your very next step is going to be uh, connect to your github account okay now if you are choosing some other github uh, repositories or uh, if you want to try some other github uh, codes try to copy the codes to your uh, github library or fork them and then you you can connect to your uh, repo and work it okay so let's try to connect to github okay uh, okay connection is successful so what it is asking is search for a repository to connect so my repository name is breast cancer uh, prediction underscore heroku so i'll mention that search okay so it has got and let's connect connection is successful okay now our next step is going to be in order to debug something you have to install your heroku cli so you can go to your heroku cli and you can click on download and install i have already done that okay so after you are done what you can do is you can create your anaconda prompt or else let's do it after we start our build i have already created my application so let's go to the deployment phase here you can see deploy a github branch okay deploy branch so it will install all the libraries which is mentioned in your requirements.txt okay so it's installing everything uh hopefully it will be done in like uh two minutes so let's wait for two minutes
Okay, so build has been successful. So it hardly took me two to three minutes to uh, finish. So you can see released. Uh, so uh, I would talk about the real scenarios. Like in this case, I already know how my requirements.txt should be. So I have a successful build. In your cases, there can be certain scenarios where your build is failing. So in order to check your build failures, what you need to do is you can connect to your Anaconda prompt Heroku login in order to check your build logs like if you are not able to see online what you can do is you can uh, check uh, check through your CLI okay. once your Heroku login is done it will open a new browser where you need to authenticate your uh, username so I'm clicking on login I'm clicking on my account So logged in, let's see. Yeah, so login has been successful. So what you can do is, let's let's open your application. In the meanwhile, what you can do is Heroku tail logs, sorry, Heroku logs tail. Ah, Heroku logs very easy for us uh, you can see here build is successful everything is successful okay now in case there is a failure there will definitely be errors okay you can either you can also do this way one dot log and you can append the entire log into one dot log and then you can open the one dot log in your notepad plus plus or notepad and then you can check it easily if you are not comfortable in this CLI window. Okay, that can also be done. If you want to see, we, I can also show you that. If I click like this, my entire log is going to be appended in one dot log. Okay, and then I can go to C. Users. So you can see one dot log. Date modified. You can see. The entire log is here build successful method okay so let's go to the application and see uh, let's go to the view application so this is how my application looks like you can see breast cancer pred hyphen ai api dot heroku app dot com so this is a global uh, uh, global link you can also provide this link to your friends or you to your management whatever like Basically, this type of work helps you in your POC level work. Once you're done with your POC, if you simply build your uh, uh, Flask application and deploy it on Heroku, and you can provide an API access to your managers or your, uh, for, you know, any of the team members so that they can go through and check the application. Okay, so let's just try to give some random data and see. Submit. So the patient is not diagnosed with the breast cancer. So. Apart from this, what uh, I have also done some minor changes in the index.html in the templates folder, apart from the Flask API, because in Flask API, if you just go and check that particular link, maybe I'll show you the link which I shared in the previous video was uh, github.com slash. Uh, this was the link which I shared in the templates folder. The home.html looks like this. Okay, this was the home.html. Here you can see form action equals to localhost. That means this was meant for my localhost. In this case, what I have done is if you just open this home.html, only one line change, that's it. In, with, uh, uh, instead of this, I have used here form action URL for what I have done is my I, this is my predict function on click of submit it is going to the predict link slash predict okay so i have used form action url for predict method equals to post if you can check this particular application this is my home page right on click of the various uh, uh, on inputting all the numbers you can see on click of submit it will it will go to the predict uh, page see it's going to the predict page okay the patient is not diagnosed with breast cancer. So this is the minor change which has been done with respect to the local host. Apart from that, the, entirely the code remains same. 
only there there has been two additions of proc file and the requirements.txt uh so i am hopeful that uh, i i am able to solve your problem or able to explain you how the flask application works through heroku and we have also deployed one uh, particular machine learning model in future slides in the future uh, videos i shall be coming up with some of the more deep learning uh, models which we will be deploying using flask and using heroku and using cloud as well so stay tuned please if you like this video uh, then definitely like it uh, share with your friends and try to subscribe the channel thank you guys